I have to eat. Mmm. Oh my god. Wow. That is amazing. And this is mochi. Look at how stretchy it is. This is amazing. Like, I'm actually, you need to make this. It's so good. I got this from the Korean market. It's ume, which is plum. Cheers, guys. Hmm. That's really good, actually. ASMR. Let me just get back into eating this deliciousness, because this is too good. Gosh. This mochi is so freaking stretchy. Like, this is all mochi. This is ridiculous. And this is actually sweet strawberry mochi. I'll eat that later. Little, these are little mini Korean sausages. Super good. whole thing is just so good. The bacon adds such a nice savory flavor to this whole thing. And by the way, if you guys make this, please make sure to add like the little bit of sugar I added. It makes such a good difference compared to like the saltiness. So good, this is so refreshing. It's not too sweet, it's a little sparkly, but not too much. I'm gonna do a little mini Q&A actually. I asked you guys to ask me questions on Instagram actually. Um, if you wanna follow that, go ahead. It's Sophia Cleo. Okay, let me just get started on the questions, guys, because I feel like if I don't, I'll never start. All right, first one. Dean, Jess, or Logan? V, important. So this is a Gilmore Girls question. If you haven't seen it, close your ears <laughs> and watch it. This is important. It's one of the best shows. But I honestly hated all of them. I'm Team Luke. Team Luke all the way, even though he also pissed me off a little bit. It's just, I don't know, just like I hated all of them, except Jess did, okay, close your ears if you're not like on I think season five or six. I totally forgot which one, but 
Jess does redeem himself at the end, and then Rory just kind of goes downhill, you know. So, if I had to really, really pick, I guess I would go with Jess. Because Logan, I would have picked Logan, but he's like, I don't know, if you guys have seen the revival, like, ew. Cool. Let's move on. <laughs> How do you find a new book to read? I have been following your recommendations and I love them. I have a Goodreads page, which you guys should follow. If you want to like see what I'm reading because a lot of you ask me like what I'm reading and that will be on my Goodreads But I like to see what other people are reading I like to read the synopsis of a book before I pick it up and if it seems interesting I just try it out if I don't like it I stop reading it and if I do like it I continue you know if you don't like a book Don't force yourself to read it just to read it like I used to do that. <laughs> I regret it I wasted so many hours of my life just reading shitty books Now if I don't like a book, I'm gonna stop reading it Also, I think I found my favorite genre. I think it's historical fiction. I also really like history and horror. I mean, I also really like mystery and horror, but historical fiction is just something that entices me so much in both books and movies. I love it so much, so it's probably my favorite genre of books. This is so good, good. All right. Is it worth to get a Kindle? So I used to be those people um, that hated Kindles. I wish you guys could see this better. Anyways, I used to be the kind of person that hated Kindles. And I was like, no, tangible books for life only. And I realized how stupid that is, first of all, because when I moved, I realized how stupid that was when I moved. Because if you've moved, you know, like if you have a lot of books, it, it's so annoying to bring them with you because they're so heavy. They break boxes if you put them in boxes. It's just annoying to transport. And half of those books, I didn't even like that much. So I donated a lot of them. And then I told myself, I'm just going to read from my Kindle from now on. Unless I really, really love the book, then I'll buy it. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And actually, I'm going to hook you guys up up on something if you guys live in america i think it's just in america maybe it's not just in america correct me if i'm wrong but it's this app called libby and if you have a library card you can connect it to your kindle and you can um and you can check out books and it's like you can check out as many books as you want it's amazing that's what i've been doing so i'm basically reading for free guys reading for free it's awesome oh yeah it's called the libby app and it connects to your kindle it's it's great it's fabulous So yeah, and and I love the Kindle because it's so light and when you're reading in bed, like when you're holding a book, you're kind of like, oh, but like a Kindle is just so light. It's like lighter than a phone. So if you're going on your phone, you can easily go on your Kindle. But yeah, it's super easy and it's great and I really recommend it. Sponsored by Kindle. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. I wish. <laughs> Were you surprised when Harrison proposed? So, if you guys don't know or haven't seen my recent Paris video, which you should watch right now, the proposal's on there. I am engaged! So, um, a lot of you guys think that I expected it. A lot of DMs I got or questions are asking, like, if I expected it. So... To tell you the truth, I did know that it was coming someday. I mean, we've been together for what, seven years? So I, I was expecting it soon, like within a year. And it did cross my mind, hmm, I wonder if he's gonna propose like when we go on vacation. To be honest, a lot of things made me think he wasn't going to because I am a detective. I find out a lot of things. I'm very intuitive. I can read the room very well. And I just 
nothing gave it away not even my mom my mom knew my best friend knew everyone knew and no one gave it away so just the fact that everyone was so good at hiding it and harrison props to him because usually he's really bad at like keeping secrets and hiding things he hid it so well that i just i didn't realize and i actually was a little upset with him at one point we were walking by the eiffel tower the day before at the beginning of the vlog when i was wearing my trench coat that was the day before and i was just thinking like Harrison is so fucking dumb. He's not gonna propose. This is like the perfect place to propose to me because I love Paris. And I was just like kind of disappointed because I was like, he's not gonna do it. And and then the next day, lo and behold, he did he did it. And I was really pleasantly surprised. <laughs> it was it was a great proposal, I'm like, not. <laughs> he did good. The boy did good. <laughs> What book are you currently reading? I actually just started The Song of Achilles two days ago, and so far, I'm really intrigued. The writing is so delicious. I feel like I'm there, so descriptive. I'm really hooked on that right now. I like it a lot. Um, and just like I said before, I'm gonna link my Goodreads, so if you guys wanna see like what I'm reading or what I have read, or what I even added a little folder of what I'm not gonna finish, like what I've started but I'm not gonna finish which I like because I start a lot of books and I just don't finish them. But it's a good thing to have. All right. Wedding plans or are you guys not thinking about it yet? Do you know how many people ask me this question, including like my friends and family? I have not even thought about it, like, in the slightest. Okay, I do have a Pinterest folder of, like, things I'm pinning, like, wedding dress ideas, venue ideas, but other than that, I don't know what date. I don't know anything. I have a feeling this is going to be a long engagement because I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's kind of, like, stressing me out. I'm in no rush, though. I'm not going to rush to get married. I waited this long. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, Yeah. I'll let you guys know if I'm planning anything, but so far, nothing planned yet. <laughs> this mochi is unbelievably stretchy. I found this at, um, at this Japanese market in Sautel, this mochi by the way, and I'm so glad I got it. Because it's so chewy, um, sorry, the trees are like <laughs> being crazy, but because the mochi's so chewy and stretchy, it's just kind of hard to swallow. All right, next question. What is your advice to those girls like me who wants to be a YouTuber but is camera shy? Um, I say just do it because honestly, like right now, I'm sitting on the floor of my room by myself, eating and filming. Like I'm not in front of everyone, anyone, and I don't know. I don't. I don't know what you mean by camera shy. Like it's just you and the camera. Like if if you're not comfortable filming in front of other people, just start like in your room or just by yourself, just until you get comfortable. Start filming yourself doing random things, talking to yourself, and. Then, Doing that will get you like more comfortable. To be honest, I'm still like extremely embarrassed to even feel film like in front of Harrison or like my mom or just people. I just get like really embarrassed because I think it's really cringe. But you know, I think you should just go for it if you really want to do it. Just do it. Just pick up the camera, 
Film, you have nothing to lose. I believe in you. <laughs> that was bacon, by the way. It's so good. <clears throat> oh, by the way, guys, sorry I've been gone for so long. <laughs> I have no explanation. I'm just not even going to give excuses anymore. I'm just a piece of shit. Next question. Did you pick out your ring or did Harrison? It's beautiful. Congrats. So this is a funny story. Um, Harrison has been picking a ring for a long time, like before I gave him ideas. Um, with my aunt, actually. She was helping him. Uh, he was asking her for help and she like picked out like the oval which is what I wanted and they were looking for a base like what to put around it um, and I sent Harrison like a photo <laughs> subtle hint of like basically this exact ring and I was like this is what I want <laughs> and then uh, my aunt later told me after we found out that 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 they had the ring already, like the oval, which is what I wanted, and then they like picked the, she picked the gold <laughs> band, which I'm glad she helped because I don't think Harrison knew what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> Next question, have you always wanted to be a YouTuber? When I was a kid, I wanted to be an actress. I was shooting for the stars. <laughs> But seriously, what what kid doesn't want to be an actress or a singer or, you know, but it's funny, me and my friends, we used to post the funniest YouTube videos when we were little of just dancing and being, like, really cringe, and we used to get, like, the weirdest comments from creepy, like, adults. Now that I think about it, I would be very scared if I was my mom. <laughs> but, like, when I was posting that... The only real YouTuber was like Shane Dawson and Jenna Marbles. Other than that, there wasn't just a thing as a YouTuber yet. So. I literally just started posting on YouTube for fun. Mukbangs with my boyfriend just for something to do. Because we love Simon Martinez. So we're like, why not just post stuff? And I just started liking it. So it just happened. <laughs> How do you get out of a reading slump? A lot of book questions, you guys, which I really love. Alright, like, so, as I mentioned before, if you don't like a book, don't read it. Don't force yourself to read it, because then it's going to be so tiring. It's going to feel like work. It's going to feel like homework. Reading is not supposed to feel like work, unless, obviously, unless you're trying to get educated about a subject or you're at school. But if you're reading for leisure, read something you want to read, because otherwise you're not going to read it. So, if let's say you start a book, try to get to at least two chapters. If you don't like it, find something else. And I guarantee you're going to find a book that you really like that hooks you really quickly. And you finish. That's how you get out. That's pretty much my advice. So a lot of the times I have like a crazy reading just obsession for a little bit. And then I start another book and I don't like it at all. And then I'm just like, fuck reading for a little bit, <laughs> you know? But I'm not going to be doing that anymore. If I don't like a book, I'm going to stop. Next question. Are you considering getting a corporate job? I'm working as one and it's hard. LMAO. Um, I'm sorry that it's hard. There is, you know, some good corporate jobs out there. There's so many jobs. If you're working in a corporate job, more power to you. I know everyone's like, I want to be an influencer. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to work for myself. I want to be a boss ass bitch. But like, <laughs> do whatever makes you happy, honestly. Um, it Working for yourself and doing all that is not so great, you know? I mean, it's good, but there's a lot of freaking responsibility, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, not knowing whether you're going to get paid or all that stuff. But a corporate job's pretty stable. It gives you free freedom to, you know, once you're off, you have the time to yourself. But like if you're your own, you know, business, you're never off, really. You're always working. <laughs> but yeah, um, never say never about the corporate job. Maybe one day I will. <laughs> I don't know. As of right now, probably not, but you never know. 
Never say never. Not never say never. <laughs> Dream collab. Honestly, Taco Bell. Taco Bell would be my dream collab. Can you think of anything more perfect and suitable? Like, it's my favorite restaurant in the world. I love it. I've, uh, I just, I've done so many mukbangs for free. Like, it's such a great, natural collab, you know? It would be great. Hey. <laughs> Taco Bell for sure. <laughs> what kind of part-time job have you ever done? Okay, so my first job ever was in high school and I worked at a movie theater uh it was actually such a nice job i really liked it looking back of course in the moment i was like this is lame i have to get to work um but i actually really liked it It was a very like chill nice job um during the week it used to be kind of dead and the managers would let us do like homework and box office and a lot of the times you would do like theater checks and i would literally steal people's candy well not steal they left it technically like when um, they'd leave when I was cleaning, theater cleaning after a movie, people would just leave unopened bags, even opened, I would I would take that too. Like if there was like an open bag of Sour Patch Kid, but it was like full, I would literally eat all of it. I would take it to the back and just like eat it. <laughs> but it was such a nice job looking back at it. Simple times, man, simple times. And Oh my god, I'm getting really full. This is really filling. <laughs> this is just serving for like four people, by the way. The recipe I followed. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, I just had like a weird. Wait, what the fuck am I doing? I'm just filming myself eating. Do you ever have those moments where you're like, what the fuck's going on with my life? Anyway, um, in college, I worked at Zara, which I really did not like. I kind of hated it. It was kind of a shitty job. <laughs> Honestly, just retail in general sucks. I worked there for like two years, I think. And then I got a job at Brandy Melville, which, uh, that's a story for another time but it was the weirdest thing even how I got the job um, I got a DM on Instagram and she this girl's like do you want a job I was like uh, I just came back from actually Cyprus cuz I had to quit Zara because I was leaving um, to go on vacation and I, I, I literally asked Zara literally 10 months in advance that I'm going on this vacation to Japan oh yeah it was Japan I'm going on this vacation to Japan me and Harrison are going and they're like yeah it's fine but like when the time came they're like we're gonna have to let you go that's too much it was two weeks like it wasn't that long um but yeah so I had to leave the job and then I got this DM from Brandy when I was coming back from Japan I was like you know what sure and yeah, it wasn't that bad of a job, but the the environment was so fucking weird. Like I'm telling you, it was like high school. It was so weird. There was like cliques and the managers were like, some of them were bitchy. And they, there was no customer service at all there. They Literally, I asked them like, what's your customer service policy? Or like, what, how do you want us to act? She's like, what? That was a weird job. I didn't like it. I got laid off at the end because I was actually moving to Santa Barbara and I told them that and they're like yeah we're gonna have to lay you off I was like okay they told me actually that they were closing down they weren't doing that well but they're still open to this day so they lied clearly <laughs> next question is career outlooks at the moment so a lot of like one of the biggest things I've been asked on Instagram actually for this is how do you make money what are your career goals? What do you want to do with your life? You have a degree, what are you doing? So I just want to put it out there. Right now, I am just doing YouTube for now. 
but I'm a really private person. I like to keep, keep my life private, believe it or not. What you guys see online or on Instagram or anything is literally like 2% of my life, not even. Most of my life, no one knows anything about. Um, I just like to show you guys like what I'm comfortable showing, which is good, you know? it's You shouldn't show like your whole life on the internet. Uh, people judge and people don't understand a lot of your life. They they haven't like lived through what you've lived through, so they don't know. But um, so if anything happens, I like to keep it private. I'm actually looking at different things I want to do right now, and I have a lot of different goals for the year, a lot of different as aspirations in life, and I just like to keep them to myself, kind of. I like to keep them to myself just in case like it doesn't happen or you know yeah what do you think your sole purpose in this lifetime is is it bad that i think we don't have a purpose like i think that we're just here to experience life and the world i don't think that everybody has a purpose some deeper purpose in the world i just think that we're just here to enjoy it <laughs> And exist same way like birds are just flying around like they don't have a purpose they're just there you know I think humans just the idea of death scares everybody so much that we like to think that there's a purpose in order to kind of cope with the idea that one day we're all gonna die and I feel like if you think like okay I left this mark this was my purpose like that's basically you're gonna live on forever technically for example napoleon we're still talking about this guy and he died so many years ago so technically he's not really dead for us because we still talk about him so i think that's like the idea of humans are coming up with like purpose and all that but for me i just want to be happy i just want to you know exist and experience this world and <laughs> I don't really have a purpose, you know, I just exist, um, I'm just going on and on, but, yeah, I hope that made sense. Would you ever be vegan? <laughs> As I'm eating bacon and sausages. Uh, honestly, never say never, but probably not. On a day-to-day -day basis, though, I do eat pretty vegetarian. I try to avoid meat, not because, like, I'm trying to avoid it, but because it's not that healthy and um, I don't crave it that much to be honest. Like I prefer just eating grains and rice and lentils and stuff like that. I just prefer it. So maybe one day, you never know. Okay, I think I'm done with this right now, just for now. I'm gonna get started with the mochi because <sighs> I'm full. My eyes are really dry. <clears throat> mochi! Squishy! Mmm. <laughs> All right. Advice on how to keep a long-term relationship alive. Okay. My biggest advice. This is so good, by the way. Okay. My biggest advice is communication. Communication. You gotta tell your partner how you're feeling or else you're gonna bottle it up and then you're gonna be like, fuck this, I don't like this. If you're not telling your partner how you're feeling, nothing's gonna change in the relationship. It's just gonna still be how it always was. And if you don't like something, you gotta say something, you know? For me, if something is bothering me, I do not hold my mouth shut. Like I did at the beginning and we were fighting a lot because I would get moody and be like, <laughs> just like bitter. But now I literally, if something even little is bothering me, I say it. Because I, I, I want to work through it, I want to talk about it and get through it so I can get over it, you know? Um, also, another thing is you gotta treat each other like you just started dating in a way. Like you gotta go on dates, you gotta do nice things for each other. You can't just like get used to each other and just like think, okay, whatever. We're just gonna sit there and do nothing all day. It's nice to, you know, plan dates and plan things to do with each other. What are you excited about in the next coming weeks? Um, excited about in the next coming weeks. Okay, so one thing I'm really excited about 
is I actually I joined two book clubs so well I made one book club with my friend one friend um, we're gonna we're actually reading Song of Achilles right now and then I joined another one with this other girl on Instagram and uh, we're gonna meet up like once a month and discuss it over dinner which sounds so cool I love that I've always wanted to join a book club so this is really exciting for me <laughs> oh my god I just had an idea should I make a book club for all of us then we can like I don't know how would how would this work if I made a book club I'm gonna have to think about this I'm gonna have to think about this <laughs> how do you find your own personal style and style it inspo okay so personal style um for me, I just love to play around with different uh, styles, different fabrics, different clothing pieces, like whether it's vintage, whether it's new, whether I find it at a thrift store, whether it's designer. I just like to just play around with things and um, my biggest advice for personal style is it could be the cutest outfit in the world and you wear it and if you don't feel confident and good in it, that's not your personal style. It's just not what you like, even though other people would think it's super cute. It's just not you. It doesn't express you. So what I find my personal style is what best is my mood that day, how I express myself. So um, a lot of people agree that I think fashion and just style is a good way to show people how you're feeling that day or like who you are that day. So it just changes every day to be honest, for me at least. Every day is different in terms of my fly will follow me. One second. Hello? Uh, yes, we're calling for Sophia that you contact her right? Oh, okay, perfect. Anytime before 5, we come tomorrow. Okay. 5 is Saturday, 9 to 2. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. My contact lenses are ready. It's good because I can't fucking see shit. All right, as I was saying, so I found my personal style by just playing around with different things, whatever I feel the most confident and most me. That's my style. And um, my style inspo, <laughs> I get it from everywhere, honestly. Movies, TV shows. I love Brigitte Bardot and Sophia Loren, like 60s movie stars. I love the 60s. I love the 90s. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a huge, like, she, honestly, Buffy and, like, Cordelia, they're one of my biggest style inspos. Like, I, I started watching Buffy in middle school. Actually, yeah, I watched it in middle school, but I really watched it again in high school. And it just totally changed how I dress because I just love the style so much. So that's my big style inspo. The 90s in general is, like, a big one. Um, what else? Just honestly, just people walking on the street. I'm like, wow, that's cool. You know, my friends, my family, just things I like pick and choose what I like, what makes me feel happy. Um, when I was in Paris and Italy too, like Italy, I've never seen dress men better in my life. Dress men better? Men dress better. <laughs> I've never seen men dress better in my life. It was, it was actually shocking how good they dress because I'm used to here like men dress kind of like trash to be honest. In Paris, everybody dressed so to it to, to the nines. It was great. Yeah, so I find it everywhere. I'm sorry about this lighting, guys. <laughs> All right, next question. Okay, so this is the last and final question. <laughs> um. What is something you just like about yourself most? Um, I actually saw this question. I was thinking of doing like physical and personality and stuff, but I decided not to do physical because I don't know about you guys, but uh, on TikTok, when people say things they don't like about themselves and things they're insecure about, maybe I have that same problem and that I didn't even realize was a problem and then I started to actually feel insecure about it and I'm like shit you know if I didn't see that video I would not have been insecure about this <laughs> TikTok loves to do that they love to just pick and choose every little thing about themselves sweat TikTok sometimes I have a problem with it um I love TikTok but uh it's kind of toxic a little bit 
So I'm not going to talk about that in case I have I dislike something about me that you have, might have as well, but don't even notice it. So I'm not going to say anything like that. Um, on the other hand, it might make you feel better because you know you have it and then you're happy that I have it too, so you, I can relate to you, but just in case. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to do personality. Um, one thing I don't like about myself is I second guess myself a lot. I doubt myself and I have a fear of failure, a fear of just, just a lot of fear that makes me not do things that I want to do. This fear of failure of second guessing myself, of doubting like if something, you know, just it's kind of like a lot to do with anxiety and insecurity and stuff and um, I just that's like the whole thing I really don't like about myself to be honest. I'm trying to work on it every day. I'm just trying to work on that so I stop second guessing myself and doubting myself and just going for it. Going for what I want and you know stop having doubts and stop overthinking. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. It's it's a big thing especially I feel like when you're our age like 20s i feel like that's when it really starts because we're at the age we're like we don't know what to do do we need to start a family do we need to make an empire do we need to have a job like it's just so many different things that we're doubting ourselves we're at that age right now and i heard like it gets so much better when you get like in your 30s or 40s you're like i can't believe i thought the 20s were the best years of my life so yeah this lighting is ridiculous I'm really full. I'm gonna go edit this video right now, set it to post for tomorrow, and then I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a lot of Song of Achilles because I keep thinking about it. It's really good. So I'm gonna go. Peace out, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs> oh.